So this is a, a review of the questions that you have on the sample test. I'm going to begin with number one. That could be different from the number one that you saw because the questions are scrambled. Uh, the first question is to test the belief that sons are taller than their father as students randomly selected 13 fathers who have adult male children. She records the height of both the father and son in inches and obtain the following data. Are sons taller than their fathers? Use the alpha equals 2.5% level of significance. Note, a normal probability plot and box plot of the data indicate that the difference are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. The conditions, guys, for this test are always, since those two samples are dependent because it's a father and son, so they are related. The conditions of the test are the following. They don't change. The sampling method results in dependent samples. Sample size is no more than 5%. I only have 13 fathers, so it's less than 5% of the population. And the difference are normally distributed. This is what it says right there. Uh, we need to test that the fathers, uh, the sons are taller than their fathers. So let me go to the data set and show you what you can do here. When the two samples are related, are dependent, you don't do a two sample t-test. You do a t-test only on one sample, which is the difference. So guys, you have to do the differences here, which is like 71.2 minus 76.3 and so on and so forth. However, you really don't need to do this by hand. This is what I did. I already entered the heights of the fathers in L1. And I entered the heights of the sons in L2. And look what you can do in uh, L3. I'm going to clear this one and show it to you. You will go to uh, L3 and type second one minus second two. And you get uh, L1 minus L2. You need to test L3. Forget about L1 and L2. You're done with it. You need to test the difference. We need to test the difference, whether the difference is greater than zero or less than zero. So, and here's how you could figure this out. The claim is the sons are uh, taller than their fathers. That means the fathers are shorter. And why did I put fathers are shorter? Because we begin with father here. So here's how you do this. Make up a height for a father, let's say 68 inches. The claim says the sons are taller, so give the son a little bit more than 68, 70, and do the difference. Since the difference turned out to be negative, then your claim is mu of d is less than zero. If he asks you to test that the claim that fathers are taller than their sons, then you make this 68, and since the fathers are taller, you make the son shorter, you're gonna get a plus two, which is greater than zero, you test the difference to be positive. But in our case, the question is to test the mu of d less than zero. So now I'm gonna go back to the question and show you, walk you through the steps, tests. It's a t-test, it's data, it's against zero. My data is in L3, frequency do not change that at all. We need to test the mu of d is less than zero, so make sure to select less than and hit calculate. And my t is 0 0.02 and my p-value is 0 0.5076. Uh, make sure to take a note of those and then let's go and answer the questions. So your alternative hypothesis, guys, is a mu of d less than zero. The null hypothesis is mu of d is zero. Test the statistic is 0 0.02. He says rounded to two decimal places. A p-value, he asks you to put it in a range. My p-value is 0 0.5, so it falls right here between 0 0.25. Let me show you here. It falls between 0 0.25 and 1. But the important part, it is bigger than alpha. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. And since we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is more than alpha, we conclude that there is not sufficient evidence at the 2.5% level of significance to conclude that the father, that sons are taller than their father. So again, this is a T test. Okay, let's go to the next question. The next question is, is asking you which of the statements are false. Well, if you look at part D, it says a type one error is making the mistake of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false. 
actually a type 1 error is making the mistake of rejecting null hypothesis when it is true so this is wrong d is wrong uh, for number three guys it's asking you only to state the claim high school teachers have income with the standard deviation of more than 18,500 so sigma more than 18,500 a recent study of 136 that's n high school teacher income showed the standard deviation of 19,500 that's s he wants you to state the null and the alternative well since the claim sigma is greater than 18,500 your null hypothesis sigma equals 18,500 so you select those values okay next question number four According to a recent article about individuals who have a credit card, the mean number of credit card per person is four. To test this result, a random survey of 60 individuals who have high credit cards was conducted. The survey only includes a number of credit cards per participant. The results of the survey are attached below. What is the variable of the interest uh, of interest here? The variable is the number of credit cards. And it is a quantitative uh, value, actually. It is a quantitative variable. But what's important to us is part B, the hypothesis test. Do the results of the survey imply that the mean number of cards per individual is less than four? So we need to test, guys, that the mean is less than four. Although you read at the very beginning, it says the mean is four, but you follow the question, what the question is. He wants you to test that the mean is less than four. So your null hypothesis will be mean equals four. Now, if you look at the data set, it's huge. I wouldn't give you this on the test. It's 60 values. You could have done it with a static, a static crunch, but I'm assuming you'll be using the calculator. So how do you do this one? You will enter this data in L1 and you run a T test. So I'm not gonna enter this, but let's assume we enter this in L1 and I'll show you how to run the test. So you go to stat, okay. So we go to stat and then tests, t test, data. Let's suppose you put your data in L1. So you're testing against for L1 and you need to test that the mean is less than uh, uh, L1 and then you hit calculate. You will get the test statistic and, uh, and the p uh, value. Okay, but these are the results. Your test statistic turns out to be negative 1.0, negative 1.49. And the p-value turns out to be 0 0.071, which is bigger than alpha, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we say there is not sufficient evidence to claim that the mean number of credit cards is less than 4. So again, it is a t-test. We don't use z-test unless he gives us the population standard deviation. Most of the time it is a t-test, so please pay attention to this. Next question, number five. Well, number five, guys, turned out to be a question that we're not, uh, the question that where we cannot perform the hypothesis test, so I made some changes to make it work. Uh, previously, 5.7% of workers had a travel time to work more than uh, for more than 60 minutes. An urban economist believes that the percentage has increased since then. She randomly selects. Well, originally it says 75 workers. I changed it to 200 to make the hypothesis test work here, and finds that 14 of them have a travel time to work that is more than 60 minutes. Test the economists believe at the 5% level of significance. Okay, so increase, what does increase mean? Increase means it's more than. So you state P equals 0 0.057, and H1 is P is greater than 0 0.057, and this is your claim. Now, originally N was 75, I changed that to 200, I changed X to 14 and alpha to 0 0.05. It's a one proportion Z test. The reason guys I made that change is because if you try to verify this NP0 times one minus P0, it turns out to be less than 10. If it is less than 10, you cannot perform the test, but I won't give you something that uh, doesn't work. So you will be able to perform the test 
the hypothesis test, which is a proportion Z test uh, when you do a question like that. So I made some changes of the uh, data. If you do N P0, here's how you do this one. N is 200. P0 is the value from the null hypothesis 0 0.57. And 1 minus, which is 0 0.057. And if you do all the math, it's going to be about 10.7, which is about uh, 11, and which is more than 10. If it is more than 10, we're, uh, we're okay to go with a proportion Z test. So... Your null hypothesis P is 0 0.057. Alternative is greater than 0 0.057. And let me show you how to perform this test. And the values now that you see in the answer key guys are going to change because I changed uh, the sample size. So you go to stat, tests, and uh, let me turn this light off. Maybe that will give us a better view. Yeah. So, uh, one proportion z test 0 0.057 and that's 14 now and that's 200 and we're changing that p is greater than p0 then calculate and i got z is 0 0.79 so i'm going to change some values here z disregard the answers in uh, uh, in the test review and p is 0 0.2139 Based on my data, these answers are correct. This is bigger than alpha. If it is bigger than alpha, you fail to reject HO. And if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, then there is not enough evidence to support the claim. So this is the first uh, video i'm going to make them short videos because it's taken me a lot of time to render those videos and then the next video will have about five or six questions probably from six to uh to ten